Welcome to Daniel Reviews. I'm Daniel Goodwin. Today I'm in a suit because I just happen to be in a suit as I start this video. In today's segment, we are talking about a dehumidifier, specifically a Medea dehumidifier from Costco. I'll have the link of the exact model that I purchased and my uh, overview of the product and how it's performed so far. Let's get into it. For context, it's late June in Iowa. It's gotten really hot outside really humid outside, which means it's gotten really hot and really humid inside. And I wanted to get a standalone large dehumidifier to help take some of the moisture out of the air in my home so that my AC unit doesn't have to do all the work by itself. That's why I wound up purchasing this Medea dehumidifier and see, wanted to see if it was up for the challenge of dehumidifying my house. Open it up. I just cut both the cables and inside is the dehumidifier. Hopefully it will not be that complicated. We'll find out. Okay, I lifted it out of the box. It is heavy, but not so heavy that I couldn't lift it straight up out of the box. So that's good. Here's the unit itself. And honestly, it looks pretty, pretty sleek for a dehumidifier. A lot better than the old models they had when I was a kid in my parents' basement. That was, let's hope it's quieter too. On the side, you got your manual taped on there. We'll probably eventually burst that open. On the back, you obviously got your, your outlet plug. Um, you got your drain hose here. Um, so you can connect like a garden hose and just gravity feed out of it into like a vent or something. And then what I'm really interested in is this here is the pump fed. It has a built-in pump in this model so you can pump out if you're trying to you know, pump up and out, um, which is the, going to be the case in my situation. So that's going to be what I'm going to test out mostly. Then here, obviously you take this off and you've got access to the filter here. I will read the manual and try to figure out how, um, how often we have to place that, but it's fairly easy to access. That's nice. On the left side is the, if I can pull this out, the kind of, uh, water tank. Let's take a look. There's actually more stuff down inside it that I was not expecting, so I'll have to see what else in here. Okay, inside the water tank is four casters that you can use to screw on the bottom of the unit. We'll go over that in a second. Or actually, they don't need to screw on. They just pop in, which is handy. And then there was a rubber or a foam insert to keep them from rattling around too much. So you want to make sure and take out the container and remove these casters so you can install them. Uh, that if you just want to set it flat on the ground, you can. If you want to put the casters in, they go right over to the side here and they just pop up into the unit there. Might be difficult to do one-handed. I'll have to, there we go, like that. And then they stay in pretty secure. Okay, we've got it plugged in. So now the moment of truth, let's, uh, let's try to power this thing up and see what happens. already kicking on. I'm probably going to need to read the manual on this. Okay, after a quick, fairly quick setup, took me about 10 minutes to get the app uh, connected, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but it's running right now. It's on high mode. It's not super loud. You can definitely hear it. Um, I would imagine in low mode, it's, it's a lot quieter. We'll shift to low mode once it's run for some time to suck the moisture out because it's it's fairly humid in here right now. So we'll let it run, get the uh, house to a better humidity level, and then we'll try the low modes. Okay, so I've moved the unit into my um, living room slash dining room, kind of a bigger area of the house. Um, I originally had it feeding into, uh, pumping into the sink in the kitchen, which worked great, but it was kind of a little more closed off and I didn't feel like it was getting the humidity in the rest of the house. And so I felt like it was important to move it to here. And I, I've, it's only been here a couple hours and I've already gotten well, I don't know if you can see this down in there, but well over a gallon and a half of water out of the air already. So it's definitely doing a good job and sucking a lot of moisture out of the air. Um, I have not seen it get to the point where it shuts off though. We're still sitting above the 35%. So here we are dumping about five gallons of 
distilled water from <laughs> that the dehumidifier has pulled out of the air. I've already dumped this a few times now. This is pretty clever. For storage, you can actually, they have, you know, a built-in plug for that so that it stays flush pretty much and you can wrap up the rest of the cable. So that's cool. I like that. Okay, the casters are all on, so that means it it rolls around pretty good. You know, not like amazing. They're not massive casters, but um, it rolls well enough on an even surface. On carpet or uneven surfaces, you might find it's a little difficult to, to move around, but it's not so heavy that you can't pick it up. All right, so I've got the unit stacked up over here in the corner. Um, it's running. It's been running for a while. Uh, there's a lot of moisture in the air, more than I even realized. In fact, we, uh, you know, <laughs> this thing's probably sucked all told 10 gallons of water out of the air. And we don't have a huge house. Um, this upper floor level is like 1,500 square feet total. And uh, this, of course, this is rated for 4,500. So it's definitely doing good work, but the moisture level, humidity level, 46% right now currently. Um, hopefully this thing will, will bring it down. So one thing I do want to mention is that uh, I did have to read the manual. Uh, not a surprise there. Sometimes I do actually go there. And uh, I think what I didn't understand was that in any of the modes on the unit, other than the set condition, uh, it will not respond to your humidity level. Um, so if you set it at, like I did, 35% and put it in comfort mode or in the continuous or the dryer mode, those completely override your humidity settings and don't care what you put in there. So that wasn't clear to me up front. You want to be in that set conditions if you're trying to target a specific humidity level. For sound, I wanted to kind of give you an idea. It never really translates into the videos exactly how loud or quiet something is. What I would say is that it's not so loud that you can't have a conversation in this room, but it is loud enough you notice it. And this is in high mode. And let's just start the decibel reader. So there we go, about 62 decibels from about 12 to 20 inches away um, in, in the high mode, or in the high speed, I should say. Let me just adjust the fan. Switch it down to low. It does make a difference, but it's not, I mean, it's, it's not like it's not noticeable. You will definitely hear it. Like literally it makes about a two decibel difference. I'm very surprised at that. Okay, so I've been using the Mendea dehumidifier for about four days, of four, three and a half. Um, it's done a great job of bringing the moisture levels or humidity levels in my house down when I started there in like the 50, uh, mid 50s, uh, just using the regular air conditioning. I keep my house set at around 70 degrees. And, um, you know, that's just where the humidity level kind of like stays in this, in this summer weather. So bringing in the dehumidifier definitely brought it down from 55 into the low 40s. Uh, sometimes at night it can get below the 40 mark, but I haven't yet gotten it down to the 35 that I have it set at. Part of that was my fault. So I mentioned, I think earlier, but on the various modes that they offer you, the comfort, the continuous, the dryer mode, um, those override the humidity level settings that you have. That's not very, it wasn't very clear to me until I got into the manual that that's what they do. Um, it wasn't even really clear on what was the difference between all of them, to be fair. Um, but the, uh, if you're looking to set it at, a, at a, a level where it stays and then only kicks on as it needs to, you're going to want to use that set continuous um, uh, setting and set your humidity level to your preferred you know, percentage. And then that's, it should work that way. So that's very cool. Uh, some other things that I really liked about it is the, the built-in pump works really well. It does pump out the water, um, which is great because <laughs> with a unit like this, and certainly as humid as my house was when I started, um, it was going to fill that tiny little uh, tank 
all the time. You'd be, you'd be swapping that out multiple, multiple times a day. I put it um, in the video, I, or in the earlier clip, I had a five gallon bucket that I was draining into because I wanted to kind of get a sense of just how much water. And I emptied that five gallon bucket multiple times. So easily it was sucking 10 to 15 gallons out of the house in the last, like again, three days. So a lot of water, you're not going to, if you don't want to continuously be emptying that, that uh, little bin, you're going to want to take advantage of the built-in pump, which is great. One of the things that I'm disappointed with is the sound level. Uh, in the high mode, it's, it's not terribly loud. I've certainly, I've had old new humidifiers and they really get, <laughs> they get loud or they rattle, you know, or whatever. They, they make a lot of noise. It, this one doesn't make a lot of noise. It's just more enough that you hear it. And what I su was surprised with was the, I thought the high mode was very acceptable for sound, but the low mode made almost no difference. It was, it was still, it was like 57 decibels versus 60. <laughs> okay. Well, not much of a difference, right? So I was disappointed in the low mode. I thought that would be more, um, well, I thought it'd be more quiet, really. So that was one negative. In terms of value, I think it was a really good deal. I mean, I didn't do any special offers or anything on it. It's just Costco's regular price, 179 For a unit that does that big of a square footage, 4,500 square feet, you're usually looking at 270 or so if you're looking on Amazon for you know, a comparable model. So the price was really good at Costco. I think that's, you know, um, a definite plus. The unit works really well. It's not as quiet as I'd like, but it works really well. And um, it, as far as the energy use, it, it runs about 400 watts and that's in high mode. Um, so I think that's not bad uh, considering the size, 400 to 500 watts uh, for energy consumption. And so just something to keep in mind, if you do purchase one and are running it continuously, you'll notice that in your electric usage. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If not, we got more coming and I'll see you in the next video.